<laughs> okay, we'll be recording. Okay, I'm not sure. Liz, I'm not sure what happened to the camera. Forty one A. One sec, where's my? It's fine, Rob. It's all good. It's recording. It's all good. Where? Oh, return to meeting. I'm not sure what happened to my camera. It's not uh, showing up me on picture. But we got the uh, we got a forty one A. Forty one A. Let's open the share again. Okay, is 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 the is the text coming up? Yes, for you, Liz? yes, it was. Yeah, it is. It, it's it's there. Okay, so, okay. So even though the camera is not working, the text is because I'm yes, not sure yes. why my camera. Okay, so then let's. Okay, so what happened was we didn't learn Gomorrah for a while, so I think we just need to a little recap so that we can dive back into the subject we were on because it's very difficult to go straight into the deep end. We didn't do Gomorrah for a while. And then obviously, L'chaim, that our, our terrorist study together should be a, uh, how do you call it, a schus for our brothers and sisters in Eretz Yisrael, that Hashem should protect them, and uh, he should heal those that are wounded, he should comfort those that are bereaved, <laughs> and he should redeem the captives, and he should protect the soldiers. Mm. And, uh, <clears throat> so... This Mishnah was actually about two pages back, but I'm just uh, recapping it because I just want to get where's that annotating thing. Um, we, were, we were talking about Avoid Zora, idol worship that was broken. And uh, this followed on a Mishnah which spoke about the Isurim, the prohibitions. You want to see where that is? Shall I find it for your use? You're good. Okay. Because we're going to jump around a bit. Yeah, I might, that's the one. I might say Shiva Islam. Um, that we were talking about idol worship, and uh, if you remember, the Gemara was having a discussion about the different the difference between statues, statues as opposed to um, to, to known idols. In other words, a person can have what looks like it was constructed for idol worship, but maybe it was bought as a collector's item or it was bought for uh, ornamental use. And then you can have things that are, um, uh, you, can, you, you, you can have things that, that are designated for Aveda Zara. That was the last Mishnah. And then we started learning this Mishnah, which spoke about Shivarate Slomim, which means broken pieces of statues. And it based itself the Gemara will explain it further that even if a particular statue or ornament or whatever <laughs> is for avoid the Zara, for idolatrous worship, idolatrous purposes, once it breaks, once it's broken, there is a bit of nullification of its status as avoid the Zara. So therefore, the Mishnah said that Amitza Shivra Islamim, if somebody finds broken pieces of statues, that those are permitted. Basically, the idea was that if the practicer of Abu Dazara, the person who's practicing this, uh, I mean, you call it a religion or this form of pagan worship, if he smashes his own idol, mm -hmm. he's on the way to the recycling bin with his idol. I hope he puts it in the right compartment, if it's plastic or uh, ceramic or whatever it is. If he smashes his own ornament, that means that he is mavatel, yeah. he basically nullifies its idolatrous, um, how would you call it, purpose. So it's quite interesting that when it comes to Avoid Zara, when it comes to idol worship, the intent of the worshippers themselves is important, because if their intent is to use it for that purpose, then it becomes prohibited for us. But if their intent is decorative, then it's not prohibited for us. So basically, so basic, based on this, this Mishnah opened up that discussion of broken pieces of statues and ornaments. And the Gomorrah extended it. The Gomorrah spoke of broken pieces of questionable statues, meaning what happens if we don't know if the statue was used for religious service or not. And then you could have broken pieces of statues that were for sure used for Avoid Zara. Like, for instance, um, you could have something that was made for some kind of uh, religious temple, and there's no doubt that it was it was manufactured and utilized for serving Avoid Zara. But on that, the Mishnah had said, and this is called a uh, an unauthored Mishnah or a Stam Mishnah, which if somebody finds broken pieces of statues, these are permitted. So you've got two pluses here. 
The one plus is that even before it was broken, it wasn't for sure an idol. It was a statue. And secondly, not only is, is, is you've got in addition to that, the fact that it's broken. And those two things together, the Gomorrah started to explain, add up to say that this is not a problem. However, there were certain forms, if it was like a human form statue, if it was just the hand or the foot, that would be a problem because there were people who did worship, even though it had only a hand or only a foot, they worshipped it. So Matzah Tavnis Yad, if he found the hand on its own, or Tavnis Regal, or the foot on its own, these are prohibited. Why? Because similar to this is served. In other words, you know, it's like... Uh, how would you call it? Uh, if you've got in the old days, they used to say if you found a torn note, as long as it had the serial numbers, you could go to the banker that give you a new one. You know, which if you've got a broken piece of money, what piece have you got? Is the question. Have you got the one with the serial number? Hmm. So basically, this mission is saying if you've got the right piece of the idol, then it could be that it's still an idol. It's still going to be served. And even if it's not for sure that it was an idol, it might still be something that would be served. And that was how that missioner presented. And the Mishnah was talking about Shivrei Tslamim. Tslamim meaning, Tslamim is a general word in this Gemara. It's funny that in today's lingo, when we say Tzalem, we generally mean a cross. That's interesting. It's, a, it's, it, 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 it's Jewish for, a, you know, if somebody, if somebody wears a necklace and they've got a little cross there, so, so in, in, in modern day lingo, somebody would say he had a Tzalem on his chain. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> which which actually the, the literal meaning of it is if he always helps us with the direct translations. But I think Telem is like an image. It means like a form or an image. Mm -hmm. You know, we had it in the Parsha last week. But Telem Elokim Baraya to Adam, in the image of God, man was created. But Slamim over here, in the, it's always important to catch the way the language usage. The way that the Gemara is using this word is to define a statue or any kind of form or a sculpture, or anything that was designed in such a way that it might be Havayda Zara, as in might, yeah. but isn't for sure. That so was, you, you yeah. Cut off a, a, a finger off the hand, wouldn't that, wouldn't that help? Sorry? I um, mean, if you have a hand and you took... And you took off a finger, maybe that, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe that would help. Um, when we were children, I know there were those, there were certain people who, uh, who, who uh, might be to take the nose off a doll, I, you know, yeah. I don't know. I mean, one would have to check the actual practical halach in today's day and age. Um, anyways, so then there was... Three years of therapy. Sorry? In today's day and age, that's three years of therapy. Yeah. Taking a nose Yeah. <laughs> and that depends. And we were full. Black or white. Anyway, so... Um, I'm just going to where we were. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've jumped a bit. So if you want to go, I'm going back to Rabbi Yechen and Omar Asura, the Holy Fakla. Itmar, I'm going to Itmar Avoidus Kechavim Shenishtabra. Itmar is. Yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just basically to get us back into the subject. So Itmar, we learned Avoidus Kechavim Shenishtabra may Eleha. What about avoidus kechavim, something that was made as idolatry? The purpose, if you go to the manufacturer, they made it to be served as avoidus zara, and then it broke. How did it break, and how is important? It broke on its own. Whatever. It didn't have a good, uh, how do you call it, weight base, and then it fell off the table. It was, uh, yeah. Avram Avinu was intentional, but we're talking about Shnishtabra Melat broke. Oh, yeah. He said, he said that they had a fight and broke each other. That we, we told that story that when Avram's father asked him what happened, he said the big idol got angry with the others and yeah. smashed them all up. <laughs> um, but what's the difference of Nishtabra Meleha is if we're saying that the bitzel, the nullification of the powers of Avodah Zara come from the owner breaking it. In this case, he didn't break it. It broke on its own. He came home and the people at home said, we've got bad news. Your favorite idol fell off the table. Somebody was sweeping and they bumped the table and your favorite idol fell off the table and smashed. What is the question? The question is, is there a bitle? We have already said that if the person himself broke it, then he's demonstrating that he doesn't uh, respect it. But if it broke on its own, so then the Gomorrah said that 
on breaking on its own is a, is a subject of debate between Rabbi Yechanan and Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. Rabbi Yechanan Omar Asura, Rabbi Yechanan says it's prohibited. You know why? Because, oh, the Gemara will explain it, so I shouldn't say it yet. Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish Omar Muteris. That acronym is Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, Resh Lakish, as he was also called. Resh Lakish says that it's okay. What's the reasoning? The Gemara says, Rabbi Yechanan Omar Asura. Rabbi Yechanan says prohibited the hollow butler because he didn't nullify it. He didn't break it on purpose. He's very sad that it broke. He might already be on the phone with the manufacturer to find out if it can be uh, if it can be repaired. Rabbi Shimon and Lakish Amar Muteris. Rabbi Shimon and Lakish is permitted. Why? Mestama betula mavatlo. We assume the probability is that he was mavatl, that he said this is no longer an idol. Maimar Amar, he might say, a little bit like the story of Abraham we just mentioned, my little God couldn't save himself. The whole Gavram is going to save me. In other words, I'm not, I can't recognize its power anymore if it couldn't stop itself from being broken. So that is Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, and that's Rabbi Yechanan. So this is an argument over Shivrei Avodah Zorah, pieces of something that was once Avodah Zorah that broke on its own. It would seem that everybody seems to agree that if it got broken on purpose by the owner, then that's clear that it's bottle, that it's nullified. Its status is Avodah Zorah. But if it broke on its own, Rabbi Yechanan says no, and Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish says it is okay. Um, and then the Gomorrah asked the question, and this is pretty much where we were actually up to. The Gomorrah told the story um, to try and raise a proof for Rabbi Yechen and an objection to Resh Lakish. The story was based in Shmuel, in the book of Samuel. There was a uh, idolatrous statue called Dogoin, and Dogoin uh, got, got broken. And it seems to say in the verse over there that even after the Dogen was broken, the priests, their priests, the Kayane Dogen, carried on doing their service there. They carried on worshipping the remnants of the broken Dogen. So yeah. Rabbi Yechanan says to Rabbi Shimon Lakish, isn't that a proof for me? Here you have in the scripture, you have in the, in the Pasuk, that there was this statue that they worshipped, and the statue did get broken. And even so, they carried on serving it. So that shows that they, they cared that it was still Avodah Zorah. It didn't. Aisvei Rabbi Yechen, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. We're just reading it inside. Rabbi Yechenon asks a question to Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. The head of Dogen and his two palms, his two hands, are cut off. Uchsivan has written, The Koyane Dogen, the priests of that particular religion, did not tread on the stand underneath it. They said, this is still holy. If it's still holy in their eyes, it's still Avoid Zorah. So the Gemara answers, Amaloi, he said to him, Misham Raya, you're bringing a proof from there. You, it's not a proof. Why is it not a proof? Hossam over there, what happened was there was a stand underneath it. It was a two-piece ornament. It had a stand, and then it had the statue on top of the stand. And what happened was that when the thing broke, so they came up with an interesting concept. The Koinim, so-called, the priests of this particular idol said, you know what? There was a Holy Spirit in this <laughs> thing. When it broke, you know what happened? The spirit had to go somewhere. Somebody, yeah. you know, so yeah, the spirit sure. that was in the top parts moved into the bottom parts. So even though the top parts is broken and now has to go in the recycling box, um, the bottom part, the mifta and the platform is still okay. Yeah. over there, and they left. Dogoin, but Oivdin is a miftan, and they carried on serving the platform that I was on. The Amra, because they said Hacha Shabke is Asra le Dogoin, that the spirit, the spiritual spirit of this idol from Dogoin left it because it broke. But what for Asa Eisivle al Miftan, and it went into the platform. Therefore, the pasuk says the Koyim said you can't walk on that platform. That's a holy platform. The spirit of the idol that was broken went into the platform. Hmm. Says Rabbi Shimon and Lakish to Rabbi Yechanan, Oy bazoy, as we say, that's not a proof that a broken idol is not a problem, is, is, is still awesome. Yeah. Because the broken idol itself was a, they, they, they negated. This one, it was not uh, because of uh, the Philistines uh, took the uh, tabernacle and put it inside the room where the dragon was. Yeah, I think that was that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 
I think that was the story. That was the 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 tabernacle get inside that room. So now that stage of power. And and that's when it that's when it fell. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. So that was one question that was asked against Rabbi Shimon Lakish. Let's try one more. It's already. So there was another question that was asked. It says, There's a passage which says that if somebody finds broken pieces of statue, they're permitted. Now you've got another issue, fines. What does fine mean? Unless you are a forensic expert, you don't know who broke it. We're busy differentiating between something willfully broken that the owner said, that's not my idol anymore. I don't respect it and I'm breaking it. Or something that breaks by mistake. That was our discussion. But if you find as keepers, as they say, you're looking and you find a broken idol. So how did it break? Now you don't know. Was it broken on purpose? Was it broken by mistake mm -hmm. on its own? So here there's a passage, a passage of Tanoima Brysa that says, If somebody finds broken pieces of a statue, they permitted. You're allowed to assume that whatever happened, the Avoid Zara was bottle. But what does that mean? It seems to be what they call an exclusion or a mute. If we're saying that broken pieces of a neutral, unidentified statue are allowed, it sounds like we're saying, but if it was definitely an Avoid Zara statue, then the broken pieces that are found are not allowed. Found is not good enough. When it's found from a statue that we don't know for sure is Avoid Zara, so then you can say, look, you've got a whole bunch of doubts here. Was the statue served in the beginning at all? After we know that it, that it was served, now that it's broken, was the spirit of idolatry negated or nullified? So you've got enough, how would you call it, if, sir? You've got what's called a double suffix. There's a suffix right. whether or not it was even served. There's a suffix whether or not it was nullified. Yes. But that's when it was a tselem. But what about if it originally was a void of Zara? Then it no doubt was from a temple that was served. So your only doubt is how did it break? And therefore, it is asur. It's prohibited because you've only got one doubt. That's what it seems. But... This would be another question on, on Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish because he just said further up that that slumming that break on their own are permitted, and it would seem that finding something is a little bit similar to breaking on its own. Mm -hmm. um, so he says he answers and says, masurin." Don't say broken pieces of avoid zara asur elo aim or hot slumim atzmon asurin. Say that the slumming themselves, the full statue is is prohibited. Ustama and an unauthored Mishnah Karaba Maya is like Rabbi Maya. In other words, he means to say, when you see a statement, broken pieces of a neutral, undesignated statue are permitted. What are we saying is not permitted? It's always you're asking, what's the deeper message here? So we say that means that broken pieces of an actual Avodah Zorah statue are prohibited. Rabbi Shimlach says, no, 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 no. Rather, take your your bull up a different a different way. Say broken pieces of an undesignated statue are permitted, but the undesignated statue, if it's not broken, that's what's prohibited. That's what it's coming to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the statue is still in its full form, mm -hmm. even though it's not fully designated, mm -hmm. there's only one doubt: Did someone serve it? Didn't they serve it? And that was the opinion of Rabbi Meir. When we go back to our Mishnah, right at the beginning. The sages said that you're not going to prohibit every neutral statue because maybe it wasn't used for our way Zara. But unless you know for sure. But Rabbi Meir was the one who said, no, nah, they serve them all at least once a year. And that's enough. No. And uh, that was Rabbi Meir. Once a year, it probably was used for idolatry or certainly was used for idolatry. And that's enough to make it uh, prohibited. Yeah. Um, that's so I think we'll come to the, the next one. The Sorry? I used to see the people sometime yes. uh, more. Enjoy the the special to the toy toy, they used to do this. If maybe they, yeah, they, they that means they, huh? they, they some of this uh, yeah, and yeah. worship. Yeah. Oh, you mean they do that with the hands? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, because huh? because a lot of these gestures yeah. come yeah. from how would you call it? They have yeah. mystical sources. Yeah. Jewish mystical yeah. sources or they have the other mystical sources. 
So, for instance, there were magicians, sorcerers, <laughs> people into different types of, I don't know, you want to call it voodoo or mystical stuff. Mm -hmm. And they would tell their children who would tell their children that if you do this and you do that, then yeah. you do that. Mm -hmm. And some of it had substance. Some of it, sometimes they didn't have the whole recipe. So, <laughs> it but people learned and remembered things. And that's how all these symbols were made based on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I think we'll stop over uh, there and we'll continue next week. Yeah. I'm the glad we got to wind have a fact yeah. or not? Sorry? The wind. Can the wind have a fact? Not in the no. of, of the statue being knocked over. Well, we said that's the wind would be like if it broke on its own. Okay. When we talk about break it on its own. A windstorm would be that it broke on its own. But then you're going to have two different opinions. One rabbi is going to say that the odor is going to be mavatla. Because like, hold on a second. If he couldn't stand up to the wind, I should pray to him. He couldn't even stand up to the wind. You know the story of Avraham Avinu when he was the other one, when he was three years old, and he was trying to figure out who's in charge of this world. And he said, maybe it's the stars. Hold on a second. If they were in charge, how could they be moved out the way? Maybe it's the sun. But then why did the sun get kicked out when the when the moon comes at night? You know that story in the Medrash of Avram was looking to see what could be in charge of this world. Who could be the deity? Who could be the God? So if the wind knocked it down, probably the owner's going to say, according to Rabbi Shimon, hey, that, that, that idol can't even withstand the wind. Liz, the bottom line is we should hear good news. Only Let's good news. Only good news. Rob, can I just quickly tell you something that happened uh, yeah. uh, last week, Thursday night, I went to Har Herzl. It was actually quite unbelievable. To one yeah. of, you know, because I'm right here in Bait Vagan, and we're right next to Har Herzl. And then I just went to the funeral of, uh, I just to any funeral, but there was a funeral of uh, an officer, mm -hmm. and I thought I must go. And um, wow. And what happened is the the Rob, he started the mm -hmm. hesped saying something unbelievable. He said, here in Baifagan, um, uh, Bokrim came to the Rosh Hashiva of Kol Torah, was Rosh yeah. Roma Zalman, Abach. And they said, can we go to Kul? Can we go abroad to the Kforim of the Tzadikim? And the rab looked at the Bokrim and he said, why don't you just go up the street? Why don't you just go up to the military cemetery? There you'll find Siddiquim. Absolutely. And he said, you know, the uh, the officer who was killed, he said, he's one of the Siddiquim. And, you know, people that were at that Levi, at, uh, they just, everybody was crying uncontrollably. It yeah, was so yeah, emotional. Yeah. But that was something very, very special, you know, and... Um, you, you feel, I'm Israel, you really are one. You really are one. Liz, I think the same thing applies to all of those settlements and all of those places where the awful things happen. The ground is holy. It's yeah. like, what did Hashem say to Moshe Rabbeinu? Uh, take your shoes off your feet because the place that you're standing on is very holy. That's what yeah. Hashem said to Moshe. You know, in case you thought you're just walking through the wilderness yeah, and so you're standing true. next to the burning bush, whatever. Those places where people gave their lives for Am Yisrael are holy. And uh, and and please God for all the pain and all the suffering, at least their Neshamas should look down from above mm -hmm. and they should see a strong nation that gets even <coughs> stronger and stronger in their memory. <coughs> because the first, we were talking about anti-Semitism before, yeah. <coughs> but the most famous first anti-Semite the world ever had was Parai. Pharaoh. Yeah. And Pharaoh said, um, first he told his advisors, which means we've got to be clever with the Jewish people. And then afterwards, what does it say? As much as the Egyptians afflicted him, so, so he got them. so he multiplied and so he grew. <laughs> And that's the bottom line we have to say to the world mm -hmm. that, you know what, we have suffered, we've had a lot of pain, we still have pain, but as much as you've maimed us and hurt us and injured us, if you thought you're destroying Am Yisrael, no way, we're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. So, you know, Rob, I just want to mention, and this is quite amazing, and you see the difference at these funerals, because the following morning, there was a funeral for a lone soldier who came from Russia at the age of 14. He was a young boy, and then he joined the army. And everybody, I think nearly 90%, even more, who came to that funeral didn't know him. And uh, she's name was Shlomo. And his mother came from Russia and she spoke in Russian. But what happened is you just see, um, it's amazing how um, everybody really, we are so united. And um, 
the Rob at that funeral, I think, said that um, it was Parashat Parashat. He said, Hashem took uh, Adam Rishon outside Gan Eden. Now he's put you inside. And, you know, it's just, you feel everybody's, everyone felt the pain. And it was just amazing how it, 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 we all are united. And, and you're right, 100% right. Yeah, we will get up. Yeah. Oh, and this is what I wanted to say that at these funerals, and I went to one for an officer afterwards, you know, you hear no words of vengeance, no words of revenge, mm. and we want to kill mm. the enemy, nothing. What you did hear is Am Israel Chai. And the children yeah. of the like the officer who spoke, they all said, We will we will survive. We will, we will, your memory will be with us forever, but we will survive. Am Israel Chai. We will keep on with you know with the tradition yeah, and yeah. and this is the difference is that there was not one word we want vengeance we want blood we want nothing it was just am israel chai we will survive and your legacy will continue and we will grow and we will be strong and that was i think the most amazing take from the three funerals that i went to last week it was this tremendous <laughs> zest for life and zest for that am israel will survive and we will we will, we will win, but uh, through our belief in our shame, it's, it's amazing. So last week, I think you weren't on over here. We told the story. Um, one of my favorites of the, that somebody was doing a tour in Italy and um, the, they came to the Arch of Titus in Rome and there was a group of tourists there. I'm sure you've come across it. And there was an elderly Jew. And he stood there at an arch and he looked at all the images of the Roman conquest of the temple. And he started saying in Yiddish, a whole string in Yiddish. So the people started asking. There were some people who were in Jewish, some people didn't understand Yiddish. What is he saying? And he said, he's saying, Titus, where are you? I'm here. Wow. In other words, wow. we've, we've, survived. We've, survived. we've survived. I, the yeah. Jew, am still here. Yeah. Huh? It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where are yeah. you? <laughs> Ich bin da. Yeah, that was yeah. the wording. Ich bin da. I'm here. It's 500 years later, 1,000 years later, whatever it was. Yeah. I'm still here. 3,000 years later. 2,000 yeah. years later. We, we, we're struggling a bit with the maths. But 2,000 years later, he's there. Yeah. <laughs> and Titus, who tried to destroy him and his he's, he's a monument. He's a monument. He's is, is not there. And that's yeah. it. I'm Yisrael Chai. We will be, we will be here. And that's that's many things in this world are not predictable. But what is predictable is Am Yisrael Chai. We'll Absolutely. be lighting the same Shabbos candles and putting on the same tefillin and celebrating the same Yom Tovim and coming together to learn the same Gemara for hundreds of years to come. And so will our friends and the people that uh, that support Am Yisrael. Yeah, Absolutely, Amen, Amen. Right, Can we switch off the, rec the recording? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. switch it off. Okay, thank you so much. I need the Sarotovite. That's where they killed someone no, no, because there was, there was some of them.